Hello, and as always, thank you for watching. Uh, this video is a little different. I'd like to use this kind of as an instructional video uh, to show the dangers of towing and the way I do my hookups and set out road cones to help divert traffic and the importance of slow down and move over. Uh, nothing graphic happens, no accidents happen, so it's not that kind of video. I want to use this as instructional only. Uh, also, I've had some of my viewers request a boom cam, so if you'll be patient, later on in the uh, video, the boom cam comes in. Uh, hopefully, you'll appreciate that. Right now, I've got just a standard tractor trailer disabled on the side of the interstate, uh, two lane each way with a speed limit of 70 mile an hour which as we all know people go 70 or 70 plus uh, right here look how close the van gets he had room to get over didn't get over uh, of course I don't have my cones set out but it's a straight flat stretch of highway in the middle of the day I have a multitude of emergency lighting on this truck and all of my lighting is on here's some more look coming in three wide three together the one scoots over a little bit I understand sometimes you can't get over I get it but if at all possible like right here look look at this tractor trail this is ridiculously close ridiculously close that's the amount of space that I have to work in that's the difference between life and death is one step thankfully at that point I was in the truck and backing it up into position closer to the tractor trailer that I'm getting ready to hook up to. Now I'm getting ready to deploy my cones to help start diverting traffic away and give me some kind of a buffer uh, as you'll see, that doesn't always do the trick either. Uh, this one, and I'll point it out here later, and you'll make a noticeable difference, or you will see a noticeable difference. I made a post the other day thanking a particular officer from the Missouri State Highway Patrol, Trooper Ashby. This is the call that he came in and helped. And I will point out whenever he shows up. You do not see it on the video, but you will make a noticeable difference in the uh, actions of the traffic. <clears throat> okay. I'm deploying the cones, always keeping my eye on traffic, trying to watch them. And even while I'm setting out the cones, you still have people. There's a shot coming up here in just a second that I slow way down. The driver's watching, I'm watching, I'm setting out my cones. Here comes a little red car and the driver starts pointing him over. I'm looking at the driver, the driver's looking at his cell phone while I'm putting out my cones. Right here he comes, the driver's getting ready driver sees it, driver's pointing to get him over, I'm watching at him, I'm telling him to point, pull over, he looks up at the last second and scoots over into the other lane, wasn't paying a bit of attention, was on his cell phone, could have been a very, very, very bad situation. Guys, please, please, please pay attention, don't use your phones when you're driving, Pay attention to my road cones, pay attention to the emergency lighting. Those laws are in effect for a reason. Slow down, move over, it could be the difference between me going home or not. Or one of my fellow towers going home or not. Uh, it's extremely dangerous out there. Uh, I don't want to say that I've become complacent, but I've had 25 plus years experience you always have that hair on the back of your neck that stands up when you're in these situations but it's something you learn to live with because you do it every day it's part of the job it's one of the dangers of the job 
Notice that even as I'm moving the cones out a little bit further, I'm watching traffic to make sure that they're paying attention. Now I've got all my cones deployed. I've got cones set up from the front of my truck all the way back past the trailer on the tr semi that I'm hooking up to. Uh, I carry a lot of cones to try to give me a good buffer zone. Uh, I recommend if you have the space on your truck. Look, even with the cones deployed, here they come. I'm moving in between the truck because I see it. Even with the cones deployed, they're running too wide, failing to get over. At this point, the trooper hasn't shown up yet. position the camera and at this point the trooper has shown up you cannot see it because he's back behind the tractor trailer but again I want to thank trooper Ashby for staying there he didn't get out of his car to come up and tell me he just he stopped he saw the situation saw the traffic wasn't getting over I assume and he stopped turned his emergency lighting on and you can uh, see a noticeable difference in the actions of the traffic. The majority of them are in the fast lane now uh, which is allowing me to work much much safer. For some reason they pay attention to the police cars more than they do to us. Uh, in the state of Missouri a tow truck is considered an emergency vehicle the same as a fire truck or an ambulance. We have the same uh, where we can run lights and sirens, red and blue lights and sirens, uh, and we fall under the same classification. So people can be fined for failing to yield or failing to slow down and move over. Okay, as you can see I've got my uh, tall forks out. Now I've got my receivers turned up high. This truck has a low front sump oil pan. And what I'm doing now off screen is getting some shackles that I'm going to put onto his front tow hooks. He has permanently attached tow hooks on this older uh, Freightliner FLD, uh, which by the way, I have asked this owner operator several times to please position himself on the opposite side of the road or go sit in my truck but he's an owner operator and ultimately it's his decision whether he wants to move or not I did explain that it's dangerous uh, where he's at but it's his choice I can only make suggestions uh, see like right there the traffic that just went by uh, they were all in the fast lane that's the difference my road cones made made a difference and helped to give me that buffer zone, but that trooper being back behind me and allowing that advanced warning made a huge, huge difference, and I cannot thank him enough. got the shackle hooked up on the other side I'm getting ready to hook the shackle up on this side the shackle actually serves a dual purpose on this uh, as you'll find out later uh, I hook the shackles in first of all I'm rather than doing what's in the industry called a double pick where you pick the vehicle up set it on blocks using your underreach uh, and then getting taller forks or turning your receiver heads over to get a higher uh, clearance level. I prefer to use my boom uh, 
this particular 1150R is not an integrated boom. The, the boom is separate from the underreach. Right now, the 1150R, I'm just rolling the whole boom carriage backwards. Um, I've got my outriggers planted so that I have a good solid platform on the back. I don't have them extended. I've just got them setting on the pavement nice and smooth. And I'll actually lift the front of the truck and hold it with the boom. There I go lifting the lifting the front of the truck high enough that I can get my uh, forks in and under the axle and give me plenty of clearance so that I can stay away from that uh, front sump oil pan, uh, which most of them are flush with the bottom of the steering axle uh, and if you don't use a taller fork or turn your receivers up high uh, you risk your T-head or the crossbar punching a hole in the oil pan. Um, I know it has happened to some of our drivers in the past you know inexperience it happens uh, you know you try to train everybody best you can but we're all human Accidents do happen. It's nothing that can't be fixed, but we try to avoid that if at all possible, and this is how I avoid it. All right, I've got it held to the underreach now. I can go ahead and stow my boom because that's all I'm going to use it for. But the double usage of the shackle, you'll see here in a minute. All right, now that traffic's moving freely, I've also sped the video back up. Uh, I go when I get my tie down chains and I secure the axle to the underreach and then I use the shackles to install my heavy breakaway chains uh, that are on the back of the truck. Right now this is a uh, like I said it's an FLD Freightliner with a Detroit Series 60. Uh, I pulled the main supply line off of the air compressor and I've got a glad hand fitting with an adapter in it that screws directly into that uh, main discharge line. I hook it up so that I can supply the tractor's air system and release the tractor and trailer brakes just as if the truck's engine was running and supplying air through its own air compressor. Uh, right now I'm going back and disconnecting the drive shaft. Uh, got a uh, cordless impact wrench that I use for that. Sucking it into my towing position. Going back and putting the uh, cordless light bar on the back of the trailer so that I have marker lights, turn signals, brake lights, all visible from the trailer just as if uh, I was pulling it, which actually I am, but uh, that gives me the legal turn signals and brake lights. There you can see I've got the breakaway chains and it's the boom cam for everybody that wanted to see that. Uh, from this point on out it's just traveling back home, back to the shop, except for right here You'll see, I slowed it down. There's the state trooper that stayed with me. And a little honk of the horn to give him a special thank you. I had actually gone to the car and thanked him as I was picking up my road cones because uh, I felt it was very important. Uh, this happened on the day after the Dallas police shootings and uh, some of the protests that were going on and other police officers in danger all over the country. These people are underappreciated. They do 
a job that is I can't imagine. Uh, they put their life on the line every day. I mean, we do as towers, but not in the way that police officers do. Uh, there's good and bad in everything, but for the most part, please, please respect your police officers. They do one heck of a job and are extremely underappreciated. From here on out, I'm just going to let you watch the rest of the video. Uh, it's towing it in, separating the tractor and trailer once I get back to the shop, and then uh, reversing the process of unhooking. Uh, same way I hooked up, just reversing it. There we're getting off at the shop exit, almost back to the shop. But uh, anyway, to my viewers, thank you. I appreciate it. Please, if this is your first time watching any of my videos, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, feel free to like and share any of my videos on my channel. Uh, I hope this has been educational and entertaining. As always, thank you for watching.